One essential piece of tech that I recommend for everybody that is wanting to build a home lab. It's a tiny, tiny little computer that just makes it so easy when you are setting up your home lab. You don't have to have these big, big servers. You can get this little thing, stick a whole bunch of servers onto it, like virtual servers, and then you can play around without taking up too much space. Hey doing, my name is Emilio, I love tech, hopefully you love tech as well, and you're on the YouTube machine, so click on that subscription button on the bell so that you don't miss out on anything. Cybersecurity is a huge, huge thing right now, and if you're like me and you wanna stay safe online, there's a great browser extension, essentially your web browser. You can actually add this little extension to make sure that you are safe when you are browsing the internet. You know, browsers play a key role in all of our lives, right? You use a browser almost every single day and you store even valuable information such as your passwords and other things that are saved on your browser. So it is one of the main things that you need to be looking at securing. And that's essentially where Guard.io steps in. Like your browser wants to add some extensions it actually can block that so it doesn't even get installed or ask you to install it on your browser. Bad people, threats, malicious actors, they're not gonna be going away. In fact, they're gonna be increasing even more. So you need to make sure that you're gonna be secure when you are browsing the interwebs. So go and check it out down below. My viewers get 20% off. If you just click down below in the link, what a deal. Go and check it out if you wanna stay safe online. This is a home lab a home lab that I've actually built and then I've stuck it inside of a server rack. Yes, you can have a home lab, you can stick it up in a cupboard, in the corner of a room in your house, but it's so much neater, so much cleaner if you stick it inside of a server rack. Now every home lab, of course, needs to have a lot of other tech. Now in my case, I've of course got your router, your firewall, got some switches, I've got some storage, but then your compute power, your servers, you need something to be able to build a whole bunch of servers. And the easiest way to do this is with a virtualization environment. Because in the olden days, you had to buy yourself a big computer and then you have to buy another computer and install something onto that. And then another computer install something onto that. You can now actually get yourself one or a couple of computers, then run virtualization technology onto them and then actually build multiple VMs, multiple virtual servers directly on these computers. Now let's talk about this device, the Intel NUC. It's small, it's compact. Now both of these devices are servers, specifically VMware's ESXi, but these two little computers are essentially the foundation, the bread and butter for me to be able to build all of my home lab. And they're great because they're small, they're compact, and it helps you in your learning if you're wanting to learn more about tech. Of course, this is just one of the Intel NUCs. This is a specific older one, but there's a whole different range of Intel NUCs, but they are perfect for any home lab environment. So you've got all the ports on the back. We're actually gonna be connecting our screen into this display port right here and actually getting that running into a HDMI, into the back of a screen. We've got ethernet and then a couple of USBs and of course then the power. Absolutely ideal for a home lab. Now, depends on the Intel NUC. You can actually just buy these already with the bits inside of it or you can buy it empty and then you purchase the, the actual hard drive, the RAM, all yourself. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna open this up. You see there's four screws, pop this open and then let's have a look at inside and what you can actually install within the Intel NUC. So on the bottom of the casing is where you've got the actual hard drive. And you can see it there connected into the SATA. This one is a solid state hard drive. There we've got our RAM. And then you can just buy two new sticks or up the RAM or add an additional one. Small, compact, very easy and perfect for any home lab. What you're gonna to need to do is you need to go and download VMware's ESXi. Version 8 is the current one as of this video, but there are also versions, version 7, there's version 6.7, 6.5, 6, etc. and they all sort of go backwards. Now, one thing you need to consider, first thing, some of these older computers may not be able to actually run newer versions of VMware's ESXi version 8. Some of them will, some of them will not. So just keep that in mind. So maybe what you can do is you can go and download 
different versions. Go and download the version of ESXi 8, version 7, version 6.7, version 6.5, version 6 perhaps, just so that you're ensuring that you're sort of covering all the bases. Once you've got that ESXi, you now need to go and get that onto a USB stick. We'll then use some software. I love this software. Again, it's completely for free. Download Rufus, R-U-F-U-S, completely for free. It lets you actually create bootable media onto a USB stick. You're gonna stick that USB stick onto the side of the computer. And if all things have worked correctly, you should actually be presented with the loading screen of ESXi. If you're not seeing this, it means that the bootable media didn't work. Maybe the ISO's corrupted, maybe the USB stick isn't bootable. You're then just gonna follow the standard prompts to get ESXi installed. Of course, during this process, you've gone and you've selected the IP address that you're wanting to allocate to each individual ESXi host. And once everything's done, open up a web browser. Now the cool thing is you can do this from your phone, from an iPad, from another computer, Windows, a Mac, a Linux, and you go to the IP address of each individual ESXi host. And then you're gonna put in the root credentials that you set up during the installation. And now within the vSphere client, you're presented with your ESXi host. You can see the specs of your host. Here is all of the details of your ESXi host. And now comes the fun part where you actually start to install your own VMs. You need to get yourself maybe Windows, Linux, other operating systems. You go to the website, go and download that onto your computer. You then just go and create a VM. You give it a relevant name and here are the specs of it. You can actually go and customize the specs, give it a certain amount of RAM, a certain amount of CPU. You then go and point it to the ISO that was just downloaded. Let's say it's uh, CentOS. Here we go, we're gonna go and navigate to CentOS. We can actually select it and here it is presented on our list to be able to install CentOS VM. Power it on, you then go and console into that VM and then you're presented with essentially with a window. You then follow the standard prompts to actually get your CentOS installed. And you can build as many VMs as you want Keeping in mind that of course, each of these VMs, you're gonna be allocating a certain amount of RAM, a certain amount of CPU, a certain amount of hard drive space. So all of these resources are going to need to be shared amongst all of your VMs. So in the description of this video, I've got links to get yourself an Intel NUC. They are one of the best little things that you can use when you are setting up and configuring your home lab. We'll see you on the next video where we talk about all things tech. Talk to you then.